Right, we're back online after the lunch break. Right. Welcome back, everybody, to the next exciting episode of the OERU. We're now going to start taking feedback, and I'm going to hand over to my colleague, it's um, Val. Okay. Right. So for the next exciting event, I'm sure you're all breathless and waiting to provide your feedback on the previous session. So we've got about um, five minutes per group, and we can ask um, perhaps uh, one person from each group to do the to give us the feedback and to pull up that what 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 did you call it the ether, ether pad, yeah. the ether pad sort of could be an anesthetic, but I don't want you to fall asleep. <laughs> so if we'll just maybe start, um, I might just start with group four. Can I do that? Yes, you can start with group four and then I'll get group four's pad up. Yeah, no oh, is that us? <laughs> yeah, that's us? Oh. Oh, I can see the bias here. <laughs> Either that or the inattentiveness, one or the other. So if we'll, so we'll start with group four, and if they would like to uh, put, put out a few highlights, we have about five minutes as to the points that were covered on what we, you know, what OERU has done well, how could they improve, and some of the priorities for this meeting and any items for the CEOs. So if I can have a spokesperson, Dave. Thank you. So as the secretary for this um, group, uh, we came up with the following things we've done well. Um, the fact that uh, we've achieved a great deal of flexibility with our open source technology model. Um, the fact that this model gives precedence for introducing open to partner institutions potentially. Um, one of the other advances is the uh, transnational credit transfer um, essentially again showing that it can be done providing a known good implementation of that uh, and that we've apparently the the OERU has made good choices regarding the first courses to offer namely LIDA and the business courses and um, that it has the positive um, practice or property of, of linking uh, champions of open education across different institutions in the network um, there's quite a few areas where we could improve. Um, the key thing that everyone mentioned was uh, ensuring that the momentum and enthusiasm that's generated here at these meetings is somehow maintained through the rest of the year and looking at ways in which that could be uh, improved. Um, we had various ideas about how that could be done, um, as well as, as helping the uh, enthusiasm that people who are attending this um, have in, in distributing their enthusiasm throughout their institutions and working out perhaps um, case studies or methodologies or various other uh, things that could be used for um, showing how that information can can be disseminated within their in the, within their institutions um, that included perhaps creating a, a hub of some sort that um, create that contain this information in a way that anyone in the network could draw on it and use it as a way of helping to make their case. Um, yeah, we wanted to do, get in the habit of collaborating uh, virtually perhaps, um, given our geographic separation during the year in between meetings um, and have some mechanism that actually actively draws people back into the discussion rather than counting on them having time in their busy schedules to seek it out. So have some mechanism that we could um, use to ensure that people are reminded of this from time to time because they'd be keen to participate. And um, also another important thing was um, improve the resolution of information that we gather about uh, learner demographics and so on so that we can actually provide greater value to our partners in regard to insights, marketing insights and insights into the learner demographics that um, are one of the key value propositions for being a member, I think. Okay, so the priorities of the meeting. Um, so I think these ones here, these were ones that I entered, but I think we agreed that um, Simone had 
um, come up with some that we wanted to discuss. These are suggested priorities that I think we all agreed on just. Um, uh, I don't know, do you, hmm, it's kind of hard to. Well, yeah, do you want to hear, I'll give that, I'll give it to the top. Okay. So we, yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to work out what the um, propositions were currently for uh, as assessing the um, participation or the retention of, of learners who start with the OERU offerings, um, realizing it's early days, we want to set a baseline so we understand how things change over time. Um, and we want to also have a mechanism for assessing the, the quality of materials. And I think, yeah, that's been discussed in the past, but there's a couple other priorities, but we can look at those later. I was just, Simon, did you want to add something? Only at this time. Okay, just, yeah, we didn't have time to discuss, but the way I was uh, looking at it was from looking at our learners, what might their priorities be for us. Um, so for my guess was digital marketing, because I as a learner want to know OEIUs out there and available for me. Um, I'd want to know that the learning that I was getting was high quality. Um, and I'd want a large number of institutions to be engaged in uh, credentializing and credit transfer so that my learning can be uh, recognized, attested by society and help me acknowledge my own achievements and other abilities. Well, we didn't get time to discuss that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if we had anything on the CEOs. Did we? I don't think so. I don't think we got there. Right. So why don't I move over to that group, whatever your number was? Group three. Group three. Oh, gosh. So if we can have, yeah. Oh, thanks, Mike. Um, OK, so uh, what OERU has done well, um, we address it maintaining a 30 plus uh, institution collaboration over time is, is a major. Um, an impressive list of micro courses, and uh, I can speak for our institutions that I've got ideas now. We have courses that are going to be easily adapted to the micro course model, um, and that's been a, a, an eye opener for me here today. Um, uh, keeping the vision simple on point as a clear vision for the organization. Um, a great job of information sharing, and I think kudos go out to, uh, to Wayne and Dave, uh, the support of just two individuals, and uh, Wayne's work with the funding. Um, and recognizing a really important one for us too is, is recognizing the autonomy of the institutions is is a huge one, um, and uh, and and the the work that's done tapping into the range of open source software and uh, thinking about scalability <clears throat> and uh, areas for improvement. Um, the fact that there are limited human resources, uh, there's a risk to the future of the organization. Um, uh, I think that goes beyond just the OERU because, uh, you know, there was an institution where there was a change of the champion of OER and we're left with someone who's a little bit at sea at the moment and, and that's problematic and we address some of that later here. Um, so yeah, needing to share that responsibility beyond just a few champions as an institution. Um, it needs to be made clear, and I think we addressed this earlier, that it, it to clear what courses are, are available. Um, and, you know, we talk about having sessions at our institution and others that of embedding an understanding and support of the OERU within the member institutions. Um, so, for example, bringing others into the conversation, such as the registrars and, you know, we have a transfer credit team that we've brought in and, and you know, they understood it immediately. I mean, this is, for them, it was very simple. Right? It's just, they do this all the time. So that kind of um, transfer credit is, is, is important. Um, universities are being pulled in all kinds of directions. So how do we get a commitment? Um, to the OERU or OER when there are all these competing priorities at, at our institutions. Um, and to clarify the, what the actual costs are to students because it isn't necessarily free. Um, and crowdsourcing funds from the public using open source models where possible. And then our three priorities, uh, develop a strategy for the OERU embedded in institutions, so perhaps a marketing campaign um, and how we're going to augment the labor force of two beyond just goodwill. And they're getting, again, the website uh, polished and ready for students. So clarity about the course offerings costs and the process for, 
what can you do once you've taken some of these courses? How are you going to get your credit and credentialed? And we did have one issue for the CEO's meeting. Um, I should have it here. Uh, and that was how to augment the labor force behind the two. Yeah, so, so that's for the CEOs. Uh, how to augment the labor force of two people. How do we, we you, you need more than, more than the two. Okay. And you just did it in three minutes. Wow. You set the bar. <laughs> right. So how about group two? Adrian. Do you want to? You're happy to You're happy to stay seated? Okay. Okay. Okay, so we discussed uh, what has the OERU done well. Um, there was a perception from uh, uh, the folk who had only seen the OERU website for the first time recently that the user perspective of the website is that it's very smooth and that it's easy to navigate and, um, and that there is a really good quality to, to the overall design. Uh, the other thing that they have done well is community collaboration, open consultation towards planning is to be commended and the transparent processes are clearly mature and transferable. Uh, where can the OERU improve? We had the, the sense of how to become credentialed is somewhat opaque. So for example, if the learner is comparing the experience and price uh, of other offerings. So for example, I'm coming and I've got my different tabs open. I've got edX, I've got Coursera, I've got OERU. It's part of edX um, and Coursera's business model to have that this is how much this is going to cost you. This is what you're going to get. Uh, there is no such easy comparison for the OERU. For partners, there was a concern raised about uh, them being able to access the contact details for students because there was a feeling that partners would want to uh, get into the OERU as a way of perhaps investing in turning leads into paying enrollments. So if they were to, um, if they were to get access to that data, so that they would then be able to contact students. Uh, also, the, the value proposition to a prospective partner there's a, a range of different perspectives that need to be catered to and that can be from a university who is saying well we have got a very strong social justice mission we believe in access to education and we are doing this uh, for altruistic reasons um, uh, all the way through to a university that says we actually see this as part of our strategic plan for being able to generate greater student numbers and get a commercial return on investment uh, also, there was the IP considerations around what uh, partners were willing to uh, openly license and what they were willing to share, uh, given the cost of developing courses that were quoted by a couple of the people in our group. Uh, and as far as the three priorities for the, um, the, the, the meeting, this meeting, marketing strategies for the OERU, which need to really address that whole, what is in it for the students and what is the value proposition, and also a need for quality assurance of the learning design and the pedagogical use of technology. So how do we encourage our partners to thoughtfully use video and other media in courses that actually has a positive impact on student learning? Uh, from that, we, we also thought that the issues for the CEO meeting, there were a few issues on our uh, etherpad notes here that would be easily able to be lifted and put into there. So that wraps us up. Um, we could we could do that. Yes, yes. There we go. Yep. I'm giving you my deer in the headlights look and just nodding. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Group one. Alan. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, well, the first bit was the easy bit, uh, brainstorming a bit around what makes OERU so great. We've got partners from five continents. We've demonstrated excellence in open source technology development. I shout out to David and his, uh, that presentation this morning. I only understood a third of it, but I was impressed. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's more than I usually manage. So that's, 
Um, three institutions are offering or are near to offering exit credentials. That is that we have delivered on uh, a good chunk of what we wanted to deliver on and, and as uh, reflected in that. We've demonstrated best practices in global transparent partnering, which I think is a credit to Wayne because he's meticulous and careful and fiercely um, concerned about transparency and openness. And it actually is a great model that you can learn from in terms of global uh, partnerships. Uh, and w incredible efficiency on operations with a very low overhead. And you know, we're always, I don't know if you're, every time people come to budget at my institution, they're always talking about cost saving measures and how we can actually, you know, we'll save money if we do this, we'll save money if we never do. But actually here's a case where you can say, we, we actually managed to, sorry? No, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, anyway, where, how can we improve? Uh, this was one from our friends in uh, Tasmania. Uh, more collateral to help us sell OERU at our institutions, fact sheets, micro brochures we came up with. Um, and this was because, as they say, at the coalface, at the cutting edge of human uh, endeavor there, uh, sometimes it's just hard to explain to your colleagues uh, how this works, what it's about. So it's a kind of a way of repackaging some of what we do so that you can just show people, look, here it is, in, in a sense, that kind of marketing that you need to do in your own institution. Uh, more, somebody can't spell strategic course development, align development plans with the needs of the network. Um, so there, we need some kind of um, fi figure out what courses we need and where that benefit the network as a whole, rather than just grabbing what people are willing to do. Um, adaptable, replicable process for the repackaging award curriculum, curating content. I didn't quite understand that one, but you said it so well. Okay, no, don't be sorry. This is ah, where I need to get out um, of it. All, all I was basically um, just um, cover the content bit. What I was actually getting at was around um, a replicable process for backwards design because basically if people start at the assessment when they're actually designing curriculum in any curriculum, they can be more efficient and clear about what they're trying to achieve. And because we're often talking about repackaging, um, we don't want people to straight away get to the content bit and feel overwhelmed that they can't actually repackage it when actually it, it may actually